Hey there, so I thought I would bring you up to date on what's going on in the Toronto residential resale market for the month of June. The Bank of Canada's much anticipated 25 basis points rate cut on June 5th did little to stimulate the market. Mortgage and bond markets had already factored it in, leaving affordability unchanged and variable rates above 6.4%. Five-year fixed year term stayed above 5%. Basically, this immobilized buyers who now await better market conditions. And guess what? Good news might be coming sooner rather than later, as Canada's annual inflation rate dropped to 2.7% in June, mainly due to slower growth in gasoline prices. This inflation report is the last before the Bank of Canada's interest rate decision, which will be coming on July 24th. And these numbers make it more likely that the Bank of Canada will reduce rates once again. Toronto and surrounding areas recorded 6,213 sales in June, 16.4 percent less than last year, marking the lowest number in a decade. There were 17,967 new listings in June 2024, up 12.3 percent year over year, which is actually close to our 10 and 15 year average. New listings were concurrently down 3.5 percent month over month. So hopefully the number of new listings will diminish as the summer months progress so that we're not left with a massive buildup of inventory going into the fall. Keep in mind that 30% of these new listings are actually relists where property has been on the market and has price change, usually a decrease in price, and is once again added back into MLS. Relists this year is up to 30% an increase from 21% last year. Active listings grew 67.4% year over year to 23,500. Keep in mind that these numbers don't take into account any price reductions, which were needed over the total listing period to get the home sold. Despite more showings and offers in June 2024, buyers are not absorbing the increased inventory. Condos saw the largest growth in listing with 4,008 more condominium apartments listed than freeholds. That's the biggest gap since 2020. The market remains balanced, but leans towards buyers due to the high inventory and affordability issues. Despite being the least expensive housing type, condominium apartment sales, the most financially sensitive, declined 29%, despite being the least expensive housing type. Condos represented nearly 50% of overall sales, dragging the monthly figures down. Perhaps memories of COVID, where condo owners remember racing up and down the stairs to avoid the busy elevators, might have had an effect. There are significant opportunities in the condominium apartment market at the moment, as many investors face losses and want to unload these properties. Buildings which typically have three to four listings, we're now seeing as many as 30 units in one building. The average sale price in Toronto for all properties was $1,162,167, 1.6% lower year over year and 0.3% month over month. When it does come, it may not significantly move the needle as it will take some time, as I mentioned, to move through the system. A more aggressive rate cut by the Bank of Canada will stimulate the market, resulting in dramatic rise in sales. Buyers and sellers are both waiting for more substantial cuts, as well as some certainty in the market. Sellers who aren't in a hurry can hold their prices while waiting for further rate cuts. And at what point are buyers gonna jump back into the market? Job market isn't great, Rent is crazy and first time buyers, of course, are having a lot of trouble saving up for their down payment. The unemployment rate went up 1.6% in June, creeping up towards 8%. Good paying white collar jobs in tech, banking and higher end service professions are being eliminated as employers are cutting significantly to adjust for rising costs. We are hoping that the interest rates will sit around 4.25 to 4% by the end of 2024, with further cuts in 2025, hopefully bringing the rates closer to 3%. Once we are in the threes and 4%, the banks will become far more competitive. Things have changed dramatically in the last 10 years. Remember when you could sell a home no problem in record time, but you couldn't buy a property if your life depended on it. Offer dates, multiple offers were part of your day-to-day -day real estate experience. Now, buyers who can't afford to get into the market have no problem buying, but can they sell? Do they need to sell before they buy? Can they bridge? 75% of all mortgages will need to be renewed in the next two years. So what are your goals and what is the ideal situation that you're looking for 
What will home ownership look like in 2025? Are you considering moving, upsizing, downsizing? Should we start to watch the market in your specific area? Please reach out as I'd love to help you formulate your plans moving forward.